On June 1st, I was arrested for pro nonviolently protesting the annual Jerusalem Day Parade. I had originally traveled to Israel as part of an interfaith uh, peace group and uh, you know, tour group as well. Earlier that day, I, uh, on my arrest, I visited Hebron, which is the largest Palestinian city in the West Bank, which uh, is a city that is you know, completely segregated. It's arguably the ground zero of Israeli military occupation. About The entire city center is occupied by about 600 settlers who are extremely ideological and basically whose, whose security needs, quote unquote, uh, result in the constriction of the movement of over 165,000 Palestinian residents. Turning from Hebron that day, we, uh, we saw you know, these miles and miles of blue and white Israeli flags, you know, hundreds of thousands of people on the streets of Jerusalem marching to celebrate the uh, anniversary of the Israeli seizure of East Jerusalem in the Six Day War. And I mean, this is it's an annual parade, however, this year there was something different in that the municipality approved a different parade route that went directly through the Arab neighborhood of Sheikh Jarrah. And uh, we were uh, seeing what we had saw in the previous week, uh, week and a half, we were very disturbed by this, particularly with the very virulent racism of many of the marchers who were settlers, you know, chanting death to Arabs and Muhammad is dead. We decided in the aftermath of uh, Netanyahu's speech at Congress and to take a stand and uh, as Americans and human beings first and foremost and myself as a Jew and hold up peace signs on the other side of the street on the sidewalk and walk up and down the sidewalk and gradually we were joined by Palestinian Arabs, residents of East Jerusalem. We didn't originally tend to, for it to be a demonstration but it became a nonviolent demonstration and I mean it was peaceful throughout. We were standing on the sidewalk and then literally out of nowhere uh, Palis uh, the Israeli police were mobilizing, the riot police came in with horses, they literally came up to the sidewalk, grabbed me, dragged me, uh, dragged me into the street, and uh, I was punched, put in a chokehold, slammed to the ground, and arrested for, I mean, basically ex exercising my freedom of speech. What did they say to you when they arrested you? Constant stream of curse words, you know, fuck you, motherfucker, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And what, when you were arrested, what did they do with you? They. They slammed me into a, you know, into a car and they basically took me in, uh, to the nearest police station where I was detained uh, for uh, many hours before I saw a lawyer and then ultimately I was detained for two days. I was never formally charged with any crime whatsoever. In fact, both of my trials, uh, tre the, the topic uh, was entirely whether or not I should be placed under house arrest. The Israeli judicial system is very esoteric in the sense that you can be held without being charged with any crime, for example. Uh, however, my, my detention was you know, far easier than anything a Palestinian would go through. For example, Palestinian prisoners uh, go through something called administrative detention under military tribunals in which they'll spend anywhere between four and 18 months in prison awaiting trial without being charged. And how did you get to see a lawyer? I, I was assigned a public defender. And how did the lawyer get you out, such a criminal that you are? <laughs> uh, I was, I mean, basically the, the judge found no reason to uh, further detain me in prison, considering that I was no quote-unquote menace to society. I have been warned that if I do try to return, I will be arrested and tried. I will, you know, try every, you know, means in my power to return and exercise my right to return.